do one of these riding with the other things. So I'm totally cool with it. So you were kind of already. That's just a cue for that. So all you got to do is look into the camera and say, uh, yeah. Go ahead. And so yeah, just just look right ahead. Uh, so and it's say, not. I, I thought it. You had to move it this way. Or whatever. No, no, okay. it's good to okay. go. Hi, I'm Bo Fallbush with Donaldson View Bab. All right, take two. Yeah, we got. It. Hi, I'm Bo Fallbush, pastor of Donaldson View Baptist Church, and today I'm riding shotgun with Willie. How about that? I like this guy. How you been, Pastor? Good, man. That was quite, uh, you've been on fire lately with your sermons. Oh, really? Passionate. Oh, I appreciate you saying that. No, oh, I love it. Um, yeah. No, I seriously, I made a comment on Sunday, and there are times when I preach that I feel like it's dying before it leaves the pulpit, so to speak. And that's how I felt on Sunday's message. Are you feel actually. like people are nodding out on you? It's it's not that. It's I mean, you cannot trust the experience of preaching. You have to trust the Word to do the work. But sometimes, I, I mean, I, I've told people before, I, I, a, a nuclear bomb could go off in the sanctuary and it would not bother me one for a second. I mean, I just keep going. Uh, and then somebody could get up and move in the sanctuary and I'm distracted the rest of the time. Or sometimes it's just, um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, I really don't. But Sunday was one of those days when I just felt like, okay, this is, this is not going over. And, and I did not intend for this to happen, but, um, I, I typically preach about 35 minutes, and I noticed my sermon on Sunday was 41 minutes long, and I told my wife, Alicia, when we were, uh, had gotten home from church, I, I said, it's like eating a squid. I mean, it just ke keeps getting bigger the more you chew on it, and the more I was preaching, the more I was like, man, this thing's going on forever. And I just, I don't know. You became I, but you self-conscious about off. it? I'm not self-conscious about it from the standpoint, I mean, I've got to finish what I'm saying. But at the same time, I'm like, come on, man, finish what you're saying. You know, so that's that's kind of that's kind of how I feel sometimes. When well, I'm folks can follow you on Facebook. They can see the sermon you're they, referring to, they right? They can. If, uh, it's Donaldson View Baptist Church on Facebook. You can follow us on there. And um, our AV guy live streams the service on there. And that's Sunday. available if they go to the right. If they go on to the Facebook, Facebook account. Donaldson View Baptist Church, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, it's a great little church. What would you say to anybody watching this uh that lives in the Nashville area or visiting Nashville? Uh what would your invitation be my to attend? My invitation is I mean, Donaldson View, it's the healthiest church I've ever been a part of. And I'm not saying that because I'm the pastor. I'm just saying that because that's that's the reality. Um, people love each other at the church. We're not flashy. Um, I, I don't wear skinny jeans. Um, I don't have a fog machine going behind me. I mean, we, we're, we're simple. And I preach the word. And yet... Um, our music is is a blended service, and I feel like it's anointed by the Holy Spirit. We're a Southern Baptist church, and you're not supposed to say that in Southern Baptist churches. That's a charismatic expression, or Pentecostal expression, anointed by the Spirit. But here's the thing. Um, the Spirit is at work in our church, and I know it, and I can sense it and he's doing great things in the church um, in spite of my bad preaching sometimes. So I think your preaching is, is uh, this word's overused, but I would say it's world class. I, I, I think uh, <clears throat> the right people heard you, you, you would probably get book deals and offers and, you know, well, get to that Charles Stanley level, you know? I don't, so, so not, I'm not, 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you're modest about it, but uh, that's the way I feel, and I've seen a lot of Charles Stanley's preaching. And I think you're, uh, I think you're on par with well, that. I think what you have to say is, uh, you know, in, in talking about miracles, I mean, it seems like this is not a coincidence. I'm reading going through my reading now of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And then your word for Wednesday dealt with the difficulty of reading. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some, some scripture in the Old Testament. I'm blown away. I, I, I'm doing the reading, and then, of course, I get the uh, get the uh, phone, phone calls yeah. for the word for Wednesday, and then you're talking about the difficulty of reading about the, uh, you know, the long passages in the Bible about yeah. the building of the temple and the specifics yes. of what was required. It's right. very mapped out, and you explained it nicely. Because I was questioning that myself. It's like, okay, I'm going to dig in here. I'm going to dig through this. There's a reason. Now, yeah. one of the things that maybe you can elaborate on, you read a lot about the law in the Old Testament, especially mm -hmm. in the first five books of the law, and you see the picture of Christ coming. You see that the laws, but uh -huh. that law is pretty difficult. But then you realize certain, so, okay, the types of food you can eat. Right. And, but everything seemed to have a benefit if you go back to that period socially right. in time. There was no refrigeration. Mm -hmm. there, there was no way of, 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 you know, so certain laws were actually beneficial to the health of Israel. Right. They yeah. were good for the people. They protected them from, from harm. Right. Right. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Or? Yeah, I would. I mean, th there are, I mean, certain, like you say, laws or even prohibitions that God gives us in His Word, it's for our good, not to ruin our fun or ruin our lives. I mean, it's, <laughs> I hate to say it, uh, but it's probably better for you if you don't eat bacon. You know, it's probably better for your cholesterol. Uh, now, I love bacon, and I eat bacon, and I eat cheeseburgers, which the Bible says in the Old Testament, don't mix the mother's milk uh, with the meat. Right. Which, you know, a cheeseburger would have been pro prohibited, therefore. Uh, but we're, we're under the under grace now. And, and, and Christ, Christ has uh, cleansed all foods. That's what, that's what yeah. he told Peter in, in Acts chapter 10. Um, that all everything has been cleansed, and so we're we're under grace. We're no longer under the law, uh, but but certain laws uh, were for the good of the people of Israel. You know, it's it's good not to commit adultery on your wife, sure, because you're gonna create a lot of problems for yourself if you do, and for her, and diseases, and any number of things. So. Yeah, I mean, th there are there are good things about. Well, the law is good. It is. It's the sin. law can't save anybody. The yeah. law can show you what is sin, but it cannot change your heart. And that's I think that's what Paul is talking about in Romans chapter seven. You know. So we've got a pastor who understands the word, preaches from the pulpit. He he really. Uh, it's been said about you that. Uh, it's almost like you're preaching to yourself sometimes I as well. Yeah. That you're you're position heal thyself. You're actually taking your own uh, taking the word and applying it to your to Yeah. Your yeah, one of the uh, one of the toughest things about being a, a preacher and about being someone that I mean by the grace of God I say this, I try to live by what I preach. Uh, but when you study the Bible to preach it to others and you start getting convicted about your own studies and your own preaching that's that's tough you know it's a lot easier to just tell everybody else to do it have you ever been in the pulpit preaching and even though you've prepared this the sermon mm -hmm. you studied it you've researched it you yes. have your scripture ready you go through it but at that very moment that you preach it does it ever just like that two-edged sword yeah pierce you i i where you go oh that light bulb just went off many wow. years ago uh i preached a sermon um and I was convicted in the middle of my preaching that um, I was preaching at someone instead of preaching to them. And I felt convicted that afternoon after yeah. church that I needed to call that person and apologize to them. And man, I struggle with that because it's so it's it's humbling, you know. 
Um, did they realize that you had been doing that, or was it just something well, you could make them as you there admitted? Was, there was some tension in our relationship, but they I don't necessarily know if they knew at the time that I was preaching at them. I explained to them, you know, my frustration and what I had done, and thank God they forgave me, you know, and, and that's a that's a blessing. Um, and you know, we and our relationship has grown since then, and we've moved past that. That being said, I have tried with all my might to never do that again, <laughs> uh, because it's you know, it's it's very humbling to have to call somebody and say, "Hey, I sinned against you today when I was preaching." So, yeah. But you stepped out on faith, and that's the thing that I'm learning, is if you just really put your trust in God. And I'm guilty of this. I, I don't mm -hmm. always do it. Yeah. There's things I hold back. I'm not ready to, you know, yeah. give over certain areas of my life where I, you know. But, it, it, you know, if you're like David and you go up against the giant, God's going to have your back if you step out on faith. Yeah. He's going to. It's always right to be obedient. No, but you did the right thing. Yeah. I mean, you did the right thing, and God reconciled it for you. And uh, when it's righteous, I believe it will be. Yeah. You know, or it has that, like you. You'll be blessed about. regardless. Yes, you'll be yeah. blessed. And uh, down the road, you're, you know, mm -hmm. yep. it'll happen. Yep. 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 So you were inspired recently. You went to a, uh, was it a pastoral conference? It was not or necessarily a pastoral conference. It was a, um, it was a, it was a, it's just a Christian conference, and it was called the Praying Life. I'm, I'm sorry, it's called the Praying Church. It was based off of a book called the Praying Church, which was then previously based off of a book called A Praying Life, written by the same uh, gentleman by the name of Paul Miller. And it's just great, great. Um, I just, I mean, I really believe, and I said this on Sunday, I can't change anybody's heart. I mean, all I can do is I can, I can preach and I can pray that God will do the changing because, I mean, I have a hard enough time changing my own heart. I can't change anybody else. So, yeah, that's what I would encourage you to look for that uh, sermon on Facebook. You can hear it. And you can follow Donaldson View Baptist Church on Facebook yep. and, and hear this man's preaching. We're fond of you. I appreciate we love it. it. We've been attending the church. Full disclosure, he is my pastor. So yeah. this is a, <laughs> an honor yeah. to talk with uh, Pastor Bo. We are going to enjoy some chicken salad chick right now. So, have you been there before? I have not. All right. So this is something Looking forward to it, he's been wanting to try. I'm a fan. And uh, we'll be back with part two. Uh, so, have you guys been here before? Yes, many, many times. Many times. Oh, yeah, okay. we we sort of discovered it about six months ago and became a fan. And uh, been wanting to try it. Just the yeah. variety of the uh, chicken salads. Yeah. All right, Pastor Bo, we're back. How did you uh, enjoy your? Meal at Chicken Salad Chick. Very good. Yeah. Yep. So, never been there before, and it was good. Very good. I know she had some bacon on. I did. I had. You bacon. got bacon in the chicken salad and the soup. Yeah. The loaded right. potato yeah. soup. So, yeah. we're in the age of grace, not law. So, Amen so. to that. Paul said that too, right? Yeah. That's we right. gave thanks for it. Yeah. We're cool. Yeah. Where do you see yourself? Do you, are you are you planning on being a one pastor? Uh, like a like a football player, do you want to retire with the team you started with? I would love to, I would love to. I don't know if that obviously I don't know if that's God's will or not. But I love our church. I mean, I've been in August of this year. It'll be 15 years I've been pastor there, and I love it and love the people. And you know, I said this earlier. There's nothing flashy about me. There's nothing flashy about the church. Uh, but I just, I love, I love, I love being the pastor there and love the people. Love the people. Great, great people. Yes. Well, I know they love you. I actually had the pleasure of interviewing Bo and his wife for a Pod 615. You can find that on Apple and Spotify, that interview with uh, Pastor Bo and his wife, Alicia. 
but uh, you are a blues fan, a blues fan, and you're about to record your first album, right? Is yep. this going to be your first album with your band? What do you call the band? Uh, Hard Road. Hard Road. Yeah. And what is the genre? It's, is it Christian it's, blues? Or? It's Christian blues rock. You know, it's kind of, um, it's kind of Leonard Skinner, uh, Bad Company, uh, riff rock type stuff. Okay. And it's Christian. I mean, it's explicitly Christian, you know, messages. Um, our, our, where we got our name from was written by a song written by one of our uh, members called Hard Road and the it's based out of a passage of scripture in Ecclesiastes and it's basically it's a it's a long walk down a hard road but you know you trust the Lord you you walk with him he makes it he makes it bearable he makes it walkable so to speak so these are all original songs you're recording yep Wonderful. How many songs are you recording? Well, tomorrow night when we go to the studio, we're hoping to do like three. We've got five in the can, so to speak. But so it'll be of, it'll be like an EP release. Starting starting yeah. out, I mean, we're we're gonna try to do ten songs, but we just tomorrow night we're going into the studio and we don't have another date set of when we're going okay. back. So we're just getting started tomorrow night. This is exciting. Are you yeah, excited about it? Yeah, I'm very excited about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I've done some recording in some studio stuff in the past, but never really with my own band, you know. And so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. You um tell us about your history for those that didn't hear the podcast. Uh uh when did you start playing guitar? You had an inspiration so, so, too, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a cousin who's about 10 years older than me, and he, uh, you know, they would we would have vacations together, and he'd bring his acoustic guitar, and he'd be playing all these Kiss songs and stuff. And, you know, I'm like six, seven years old, and I'm like, I got to be able to do that one of these days. So I really kind of started playing the guitar when I was 14 and just took to it. I mean, I and I wanted to be professional musician. I, in my early 20s, I wanted to be a lead guitar player in a band touring the country. But I was shy. I didn't have that killer instinct. I just didn't know how to network and all that kind of stuff. And I, I liked things too much, like having a roof over my head and three meals. I didn't want to live out of my car, basically, to, to do... I didn't have this, you know, gig or die type Okay. mentality <clears throat> and so I, I never accomplished that but you know God lets me use the gift of music that he has given me now to reach people in a segment of society that may not ever darken the door of a church you know and so um, I, I play on at some blues jams around town and stuff just for fun and and I do it you know to to meet people how do people react when they find out you're a pastor? <laughs> it's 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 funny. I mean, everybody has been very positive, but uh, they're 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 pretty shocked. You know, they're like, "How is it that a preacher can play that like that?" You know, and the the truth of the matter is, is I was a I was a blues man long before I was a preacher. I guess. So. Yeah, and we also offer Dawson View Baptist mm -hmm. also offers. Singer songwriter night. Yeah, yeah, talk about that. So the singer songwriter night is typically the last Saturday of the month down in our fellowship hall. We have food. Uh, our kitchen committee does a great job with food and stuff. And then um, it's a singer songwriter night. Now you don't have to be a songwriter to sing. Um, most of the songs that are performed are original songs uh, by. Whoever wants to come, our our requirement is it does not have to be Christian. It just needs to be clean, okay? Um, and so we, you know, we don't mind if people do secular songs. We just want them to keep it clean, and because we are a church, and so we've really gotten good response. And you know, we'll have uh, we will start at six thirty, 
and um, the, the times and dates and all that stuff you can find it on our website at donaldsonviewbc.com um, but uh, we'll have anywhere from six performers to we've had as many as 12 or 13 you know we start at 6 30 typically go till about 8 or 8 15 it's fun it's it's just it's a great night and we we really love it yeah and you perform too you usually yeah, song, I, right? I typically do yeah and my wife my wife's got a great voice and so yeah she does she uh she and i will do something do y'all you know, ever think about uh doing a duo together i mean like well I a little mean, side project well, well over yeah. the over the year i mean we did have a band together a few years ago uh called the voice of thunder alicia has a super strong voice loud but it's great you know and she was on a mission trip in india and she was leading these children at this orphanage to sing and the lady that ran the orphanage said you have the voice of thunder you know and because her okay. voice was so loud and so that's where we got the name for that band and and we did and alicia liked that yeah well, yeah, liked yeah, that. yeah yeah thunder so, voice but uh but she um she got a great voice and so we have done music over the years she and i and for years i mean i didn't basically touch an electric guitar i was doing primarily acoustic stuff in church with her and things and then we started this uh voice of thunder band and i started you know doing more electric stuff which I, that's that's what i love the most you know does she write as well she does not much but um she she does write some she, she writes she writes quality songs she she doesn't write a lot but what she does write is very very good quality over quantity exactly i've always been that one yeah i always felt like maybe by the time we're 85 we'll that's why the eagles only put us out maybe together. three or four years yeah, right that's right quality yeah. over quantity yeah uh yeah is there any what would you look forward to doing in retirement when that time? That's the ways off. But what would you? It's, what would your dream retirement be? Well, it's it's funny that you say that because Alicia, we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, and she's like, "So, I mean, do, could you see yourself retiring at sixty-five? And I'm like, "No, I mean, I, there's no purpose. There would be no purpose unless I, you know, got dementia or something and needed to. But I don't. I don't really see myself retiring. One of the things, a dream that I have that I would like to do, uh, one of these days later on down the line, um, I would love for Alicia and I to have another band together. And if we're in some sort of retirement stage, if the Lord calls us away from the pastorate, calls us to retirement, or calls us to a different ministry, I would love to do like what my band does right now with Alicia singing um, and touring around and doing that. I mean, that's that's kind of a dream I have. I would I would love to do that. So those of you in your 50s planning to retire at the Villages, yeah. look for a that's right. Voice of Thunder coming to a retirement <laughs> uh, center near yeah, you. That's right. That's yeah, right. Voice of Thunder. And we can play as loud as we want because people can't hear very well. So, you know, we can turn our amps up and it just sounds like normal volume. So. It would kind of be a uh, comedian to me to think it, that would be an inappropriate name for that tour would not be the farewell tour. You want, you want to do, <laughs> no, you don't no, want to mention, there's, no, a, you don't there, want to there's certain that. words you don't mention, you know, certain yeah. songs you don't perform at a wedding. Yeah. I used to right. make that joke at chamber meetings. I will not uh, play Love on the Rocks against all odds. Yeah, These are songs you don't play right. at a wedding. That's right. And you don't Keep call your it. hands to yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> it, but then you have the farewell tour. That would not be the right no, name for would, Voice that, of Thunder in a retirement good. community. Cause exactly, exactly. You never know when that, God forbid, that ambulance is pulling up yeah, the front door. That's right. So I'm ready if it does. Yes. The long goodbye. That yeah, would not be, yeah. yeah I don't, I think that's probably probably one too. Yeah. So, we, have you got come up with a name? Is it going to be just self-titled Hard Road? Um, probably. Yeah, probably. that's a great. I, yeah, that works. Yeah. And you have a song called Hard Road as well, yeah. all right? Yeah. You it are cutting us, that tomorrow. Yes, we are. Okay. Yeah. And it took us forever to agree on a name, and we finally agreed on that name. We played our first show at. We actually played at Donaldson View and had a good response um, for that. But we finally agreed, hey, you know, people are walking a hard road 
in life and we want to come alongside people that are walking a hard road and hopefully give them some encouragement and direct them to Jesus as the as the one who sticks closer than a brother on that hard road that he can that he can help you on that if you'll trust him so that's kind of our mentality for it yeah well we'll get back with pastor Bo Fabish again on another episode when that album is ready for release and we'll see how things and we'll catch up with Bo again at some point in the future thanks for tuning in to Ride with Willie this is Ride Shotgun with Willie Pastor Bo Fabish right. thanks for having Donaldson me. View Baptist Church come visit one Sunday say hey to us that's right take care <laughs>